Gone are the days of needing a DSLR camera to take great high quality photos for your Etsy shop. Instead, now everything that you get inside a DSLR camera, you can find inside your phone, whether it's an iPhone, an Android, you name it. Our phones have so much capability now to take great high quality product photos that it's very unlikely that you need to invest in a DSLR unless you really want to. So in today's video, I'm going to share how you can get good product photos just using your phone because as you will no doubt know photos are the key to getting sales because when selling online people can't see your product they can't touch your product they can't potentially smell your product like whatever your product is there is a barrier between us as the buyer and the product behind the screen that we're looking at. So your photos are key to translating the amazing quality of your product, but also why someone would want to or need to buy it. So your photos are obviously super important in terms of making that first impression. People will often look at an image before they read any text. So high quality photos are therefore super important. And if you have high quality photos, this will also mean that you can charge a higher price. It's what's known as perceived value and your branding of which your photos are part of your branding will help you be able to charge higher prices for the products that you're already making. So without further ado, let's get into the top tips today on how to create good product photos just using your phone. Tip number one, very simple, but very effective. If you can, be sure to always use your back camera rather than your front camera because the back camera is the higher quality camera on most phones. Now, there are times that you might prefer to use the face camera. Let's say you're doing something with your face and you want to obviously um, like see the screen when you're taking a photo. Let's say you sell earrings and obviously you want to see your ears when you're taking the photo. Well, top tip, if you want the high crisp photos and to use your back photo, just simply put a mirror behind your camera so that when you're pointing it this way, you can see the screen in the mirror, but take the high quality photos. And no matter what lens you're using, whether it's front or back lens, please, whenever you take photos, always clean the lens before you take photos. We carry our phones around pretty much 24 seven in all the grubby places that we go to. And of course your phone is picking up each and every little bit of dust and speck of grime. So obviously that is gonna distort your lens. So before you take any photos, get any kind of cloth, obviously I wear glasses, so I prefer to use the lens cleaner. And all you gotta do is just wipe your lens. And if you're not already doing this one tip of just change, quickly giving your lens a quick clean, you will already, just by doing that, see a huge improvement into the quality of your photos because you're taking photos with a clean lens. Next top tip, we're talking all about lighting. Lighting is the key and the main difference between a kind of subpar amateur looking photo and a professional looking photo. It's not down to the camera that you have. It is all about the lighting to which you light your photo. Now you do not need to invest in high quality box lights, ring lights, things like this. I will talk about unnatural light in a minute, but just simple daylight is free. You, everyone has access to it, whether it's outside or by a window, and it is perfectly fantastic enough to take high quality photos. The key though is knowing the right kind of light to take photos. So you want a nice bright day, but not an overly shiny sunny day. Because what happens when the sun is really bright, it's gonna cast a lot of light, especially if you're in front of a window, onto your subject and it's actually gonna overexpose it. Whereas obviously um, if you're in a very dark day, let's say it's raining or it's very stormy, we're having a storm right now, so I'll show you some clips in a minute. Um, but if you shoot on a really dark day, you're not even gonna have enough light to light the product that you're taking a photo. So really you want to go in between. You want a bright sunny day, but you want the sun behind clouds so that it's taking off that sharpness. So here we are, it is a wonderful kind of winter, stormy day today we are having a right old storm and as you can see if i turn all the lights off in here super dark right super dark and 
I'm stood in front of the window right now. So what you're having is my Dutch face is obviously very dark. You're not really seeing any features and you can't even see the background. And this is because I'm backlighting. Whereas if I flip around, Ta -da! I'm now in front of the window and obviously you can see all my face, you can see all my facial features, you can see some of the background, but I'm getting more light in my face. So obviously you always want to make sure that you're lighting your products correctly. Um, and I'll explain this a little bit more as we go through the unnatural light, because when you're in front of a window, you haven't got as much control over the light. What you can do though, is have a white piece of paper or even a mirror to help you bounce some of the window from, some of the light, sorry, from the window here in back onto the product. Um, and this will be easier to explain when I've got unnatural light to show you but uh, top tip make sure your light is in the right place so make sure it is facing your product and not behind you now if you're in the uk like me and we struggle to get a great filming day whether it's sunny with a little bit of overcast unless it's kind of the summer then you might want to invest in some unnatural light so here i am right now i'm just purely lit by my imac screen whereas if i add in my box light so that's one light that's two lights you can see already it's going to brighten up my um, screen and of course I always like for my YouTube videos just to add a bit more light in the background this is more like ambience as opposed to actual well lit the main light is coming from my box lights here so if you do struggle to have control maybe over when you can take photos like if you're not able to wait until that perfectly kind of sunny but overcast day investing in some lights would be a great idea especially if you're juggling working full time and then you only take your photos in the evening having a natural light um that you can control is going to help you obviously be consistent in terms of your product photos so next top tip when you're buying a natural light so box lights ring lights things like this be aware what kind of photos you want to take. I know that ring lights are all the rage at the moment, but they're only really any good if you're going to be taking photos of a face, portrait photography. And this is because they give off this ring light effect, which obviously you can see I wear glasses. Then obviously if I was to do a ring light recording my YouTube videos, you'd have this funny glare on my glasses the whole way through. And I don't know about you, but it annoys me and I'm sure it would annoy you. Now, obviously I'm using this as an example, but if you're taking products and if they're plastic, metal, some kind of reflective surface, if you're using a ring light, just like my glasses, you're gonna get this ring light on your product. And of course you can angle your lighting a little bit, but this is really hard to avoid. Whereas if I take off my glasses, obviously the whole emphasis on why ring lights are so great is you get this little sparkle in your eye. So if you're doing kind of talking to the camera, those sorts of videos, ring lights can be really great to give you that sparkle. Obviously I wear glasses, so this doesn't work for me because I get that super duper annoying ring. <laughs> Instead, if you're focusing on product photography and even if you want to take photos of yourself, I would recommend investing in box lights. They give you a great, fantastic overall light that you can angle anyway. They will light your face and they will give you a lot more versatility and flexibility in the light that you are able to shine and use. And here's my setup of how I record my YouTube videos, just to give you a bit of idea. You might be like, Sam, the lights aren't even pointing at you. Well, let me demonstrate why you might want not want to shine your light directly on your product instead you might want to bounce them off a surface let me demonstrate this using my face so going back to the glasses example let's say you have a product again that's reflective paper plastic uh, metal that kind of thing what happens is if you shine the light directly on your face so if I move one of these I'm going to really kind of blow out my face especially if I've got it here like again I've got the glare on my glasses this is and this is actually okay, I could live with this, but if you really sort of play with it, like it's gonna really bounce off your surfaces here, like your, your plastics and glass and all this sort of thing. Instead, what you might find is if you bounce it off a surface, so for instance, if I angle these back towards my uh, wall, I can bounce the light off the wall 
a little bit more. There we go. Um, so what I'm doing now is I am bouncing the, the lights off the wall into my face. So that is rather than lighting up the background, I'm lighting up my face here. And obviously this works the same with your products. If you want the attention on your products and you want to avoid any nasty glare and things like that, then rather than pointing the light directly at the product, try bouncing it off a wall, a white piece of card. Again, a mirror might work. And um, it's just all about bouncing the light. And of course, if you sell little products, then you might also like a photo box. This helps you create that all around kind of lighting effect. And um, it doesn't give you as much control, like I say, in terms of bouncing the light. But if you have a little product and you want that beautiful white background photo boxes are also great potentially as an investment in the future. So once you've got your light set up correct, and some of this will come through trial and error, but once you've got it all correct, you will not need to use flash. So don't use flash because if you use flash, when you've got all your lights set up correctly, what you're actually gonna do is flatten your image and it's gonna make it look kind of less high quality. Take the flash off, remove the flash off your phone, just use the lighting that you've perfectly set up. Just follow the rule of like a triangle. You really want light from all areas. Um, but yeah, don't use flash. It just flattens your image and makes it look a bit like amateur again. Now, of course, I'm talking about purpose bought lights, but you can also do this with simply lamps in your house. I have kind of unnatural yellow light in these lamps, but you can buy just like you would in a photo box, white light, like really bright white light bulbs that you can put in your lamps at home. So if you already have some great lamps that maybe even have like a directional um, kind of angle on them, then obviously if you can just, it's a lot cheaper potentially to buy a white light bulb than investing in kind of soft box lights or photo boxes. And you'll find things like that from any kind of like DIY or furniture light kind of shop. And then the last tip is don't be afraid to edit your photos slightly. Now, when it comes to editing, I would focus on the light rather than editing like the color tones and things, unless you've taken photos and maybe they are a bit yellow or green. Really, you want to focus on maybe just improving like the crisp or sharpness or getting rid of any shadows from your photos. So when it comes to your editing app and you can get this just straight in your camera roll or photos app within the phone that you have, you might wanna look at changing the brightness. This usually adds a little bit more of that crisp light. So especially if you're dealing with natural light, that can usually give you that kind of um, unnatural light kind of crispness um, if you don't have photo boxes and things like that. And you might wanna also play around with the highlights and low light in order to potentially delete or lessen any shadows that are on your photo. Our photo apps and kind of camera roll apps have a variety of editing now available in them. And the best way to learn is just to play around, see what each of them do, see what your style of photo is do you like that crisp white kind of bright photo or is your brand maybe more on the moody side and you like that darker kind of shadowy photo always go back to what your branding is what it is that you're conveying with your brand and obviously make sure that your photos match it any questions about what I've taught today, pop them in the comments. I will be more than happy to answer them. Hit subscribe if you want more photography tips and general tips on how to get more sales in your shop on Etsy. And obviously in this video, we talked about how to improve your photos. But if you want to know what photos to put in your Etsy listings, check out this video next. I'll see you on over there. Bye.